While it has been a rough few weeks for my over-unders, it's been a pretty good few weeks for the New York Empire, who come into week 6 at 6-0. They are heading up to Toronto for the first time since 2019, but for the second time to Canada in the last week. The Empire had no issues dealing with Montreal or Ottawa north of the border last weekend. And while the rush did struggle against the Empire in New York, DC was given all that they could handle with the Toronto rush up in Toronto last weekend, heading into the fourth quarter up by one and only falling by the final scoreline of 27 to 26. The returns of Ryan Polas, Kelvin Huang, and Keith McRae are going to pay huge dividends for Toronto on both sides of the disc. And certainly against DC, Ryan Polas showed out five goals, five assists, and one block. That's a matchup that this New York Empire defense will see for the first time. And speaking about that Empire D, it's here where I have to use great restraint in this over-under. Because I would love to start this over-under with something for the 2019 college champion and the 2022 runner-up in the college championship, plus the 2022 Callahan winner in John Randolph, who makes his Empire debut this weekend. He can do everything. He's another star. And I don't use that term lightly. He's another star for the New York Empire. And without Elliot Chartok this week, I'm really interested to see how Anthony Nudez and Charlie Hoppus choose to utilize him up in Toronto. As a youngster in 2017 and 2018 for the Cascades, he did split time pretty much between offense and defense, so it's really going to depend how that game shakes out. But alright, maybe we should get to an over-under, and I'm going to stay or switch to, not sure yet with John Randolph, but we're going over to the D-line, and it's Antoine Davis. He went off against Toronto two weeks ago. Finishing the day with two goals, four assists, and two blocks, a plus eight, and a perfect 11 for 11 with 319 total yards and a perfect three for three on his hooks. And he did that in just 16 D points. Yeah, not a single O point and just 16 D points. His grand totals for the season of five goals, eight assists, and six blocks could indicate that the rush game was an outlier. But Tuan is a player who thrives on confidence, and that first meeting would have given him plenty of it. So for the over-under of a plus 4.5, I'm going over, even if his second best plus minus this year has been a plus 3. Whichever lines that Jeff Babbitt and John Randolph play on, those are the aces in the hole for the Empire. And moving Randolph in particular as a hybrid, aka another good thrower to that D-line, could mean Davis gets in the end zone more than once. And you can help the Empire get into the end zone against DC by cheering them on on Spirit Night. Wear your green and black and come out to Joseph F. Cena Field on June 10th at 7 p.m. I don't need to tell you that the rematch of the Breeze will be absolutely can't miss, so hopefully we see you there. Back to the over-unders for the Toronto Rush, and across the way from that Antoine Davis D-line on the Toronto O-line is Luke Camire, the safety glove, the decision maker for an inexperienced squad that does play well at home. They've struggled on the road, but they play well at home. Let's circle that in particular, and that's why I'm going to go over for this category. Camire leads the entire league in completions with 277, just five more than second place Elliot Chartok, who will fall down those rankings as he's out for this one. Just a quick note, Osgar is 9th at 200 and Jack Williams is 10th with 199. So expect both of them to potentially finish the week in the top six, making up for Elliot being out. But back to the Toronto backfield, okay, there is a part of me that does think I set myself up to fail here, going over 55 completions. His 51 against the Empire last time and 36 in the opener against Montreal may be more indicative of what we have to expect than the 64 he had against Ottawa and Boston and the 62 against DC. But I think with Polots and McRae back, Camira will have just enough help to hit that magic 56. The other reason I have to trust in Comire a little bit is that he does deserve some credit for leading the entire league in total yards with 3,474 and throwing yards. Let's put some respect on that name, that being Comire, a kid who grew up since the age of 13, idolizing the dynasty that Toronto had created in the East. And rounding out our over-unders, yeah, I'm a little salty that I've been bitten by going over on Empire players a few times. They're winning in a team way. But I still have to stay positive, give them all that courage, because they are 6-0. And regardless of who scores the goals or how it happens, this is a dominant force. And I think for that reason, while the Empire's depth has been so much greater, this is still a star-driven team, where the stars are absolutely shining in the league-leading categories. So for our final over-under, I'm combining Ben Yacht and Jeff Babbitt. An amalgamation of a player that would be the single most dominant athlete the sport has ever seen, and someone you couldn't pay me to guard. But for the duo, we're going with a combined 10 goals, and I'm hitting the over. And this is quite a bit about Jeff's move to the offense when Charles Weinberg went down. In the three games for the last two weeks, he scored 4, 4, and 7 goals. So while it may sound like I'm hedging my bets that he stays on the O-line, 
I think he's going to go back to D, but that doesn't worry me. He also scored four against DC and four against Philly on that D line, with the one goal against Boston being the outlier. So let's mark Jeff down for four goals, why don't we? Because this category is really about Yacht, who for the last three games alongside Babadano has scored eight against Toronto and six and five against Montreal and Ottawa respectively. This after just nine goals total in his first three games. The two-time MVP has released the Kraken and is now leading the league with 28 goals, four in front of second place Babbitt with 24, albeit with New York playing at least two more games than everybody else. While it doesn't affect the over-under, Yad is also the first to 2,000 receiving yards, Portland's Leandro Marks, who I told you was going to be a star, sits behind him with almost 1,700 in two less games. The final fun fact here, Toronto's James Lewis, who I highlighted in week four, is tied for fourth in goals with 21 and third in receiving yards with just over 1,600, 17 more than fourth place Ryan Osgar. That's enough fun facts for over under, because again, it's Antoine Davis over plus 4.5, Luke Camere over 55 completions, and Ben Yacht and Jeff Babbitt over a combined 10 goals. If you've got an opinion, and most ADL fans do, hit us up on Twitter or Instagram with your picks, and enjoy the game.